Hey everyone, I'm Joe. This is my brother Mike, and welcome to Dropshipping on the Couch. Today, we're going to be talking about dropshipping profit margins. And since Mike does all the numbers and the um, kind of the accounting work for our stores, uh, he's going to get in. You know, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into you know what what you can expect uh, for profits for high ticket dropshipping profit margins and. Um, you know, how to identify whether a margin's good or not, and make sure you watch to the very end because we're going to give you a kind of like a really good hack that we use that makes us tons of extra money uh, uh, per month. How much would you say he's made us this month in extra money? Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll go to it at the end of the video. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. So, First question I want to ask Mike is, you know, what what should you expect when you're doing high ticket drop shipping? What type of profit margins can you expect? So I think this number <clears throat> um, definitely varies, not just on an industry level, but also, I mean, it really just comes down to the supplier. So you know, you can have two suppliers selling essentially the same product. Mm -hmm. One will give you fifty percent margin. One will give you ten percent margin. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when people go and you know, uh, they try to pick a, a profitable product or a profitable niche in high ticket drop shipping. Um, I think it's a, a bit of a misleading thing that people teach. And that's kind of why, you know, in our course, we talk about finding different product types and, you know, not just really, not sticking to one, but it's more, it's more about taking a big overarching view of how you want to make your store and then you pick your product types. And then yeah. from there, you can go and find all the suppliers that sell that. And then from there, you can narrow down to say, hey, these people give me the best margins. I'm going to push them. Yeah. So 10 to 50%. I mean, that's kind of a big range. Um, do, you, do you think people will be confused by that? Be like, well, you know, what if I get a supplier that's 10%? Should I sell their, you know, should I sell their mm -hmm. stuff? Should I not sell their stuff? So is the margin, the profit margin actually important? Or does it matter, you know, how much you make on, at the end of the day with a sale? Yeah, it's definitely not the end all be all. And I'll say, you know, on one of the, the sites that we the site that we sold, mm -hmm. um, if you remember, like our best selling product, the margin was actually oh, yeah. was pretty shit. So, but it didn't necessarily matter because they were so easy to sell. They were just flying off the shelves, hypothetically. <laughs> um, <laughs> the digital shelves. Yeah, and so I mean, even though we were making ten percent on each on each product, it didn't matter because we would sell you know a handful a day. And so is that is that a better arrangement than having fifty percent on a product that you only sell a couple times a month? Yeah. So there's other factors that go into it, and you know, like the competition, people selling the product, how easy they are to work with, and so it's not the all supplier. Of, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. the supplier. Do the items come damaged a lot? Is it, you know, a hassle to deal with? So your actual percent margin is not the end all be all. Um, I think a better metric would be your, you know, your cost per conversion. Right. And how that factors into the actual um, amount that you make per sale. Right. Because So, so for yeah. people who don't know, I mean, cost per conversion, what exactly does that mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Just so, make, it, make it simple for the light. <laughs> so when we sell um, on our dropshipping websites, we mainly sell high ticket items through Google ads. So what that means is we're really getting in there and targeting directly for what customers are searching exactly when they're ready to buy. So when we say cost per conversion, it's essentially the ad cost that we need to spend in order for a customer to come and make a purchase with us. So. If we're you know making a hundred dollars on a product and it costs us ten dollars in ad spend, right? To get them, our cost per conversion is ten dollars. Right. So if it's again if it's something that's flying off the shelves and it you know you have a ninety dollar margin, right. it's costing you ten dollars to sell one and you make a hundred dollars back and you could do that all day, by all means. But every single supplier and every single product. Is going to be different and we you know in our course we go over how to sort of get ahead of the competition and how to give your product the best chance of selling especially when you're new and you know you don't have reviews to leverage and you don't have um a lot of advanced right. and knowledge and you don't necessarily need that but 
Yeah, the point is it comes down to other metrics and as long as the products you're selling are expensive, you should have enough padding to even if you're only getting 10%, uh, you can make it work with little to right. little, little experience. So what types of products would you say have high profit margins and what types of product would you say, products would you say have low profit margins or can you even make that classification? Yeah, I don't think you can even make that distinction. And like, you know, like I was saying earlier, I don't think it's a good way to look at things because, you know, two different products um, from different suppliers will have totally different profit margins. Yeah. And so, you know, we've, we've even had the same supplier. Like one product will have a really good margin. Another product will have a, right. a bad margin. So really the only way to actually know is to go in there and acquire the suppliers and see what you're working with. And then you go from there. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Um, so real quick, before we get to the, uh, the trick that we like to use to make a lot of extra profit margin, um, you know, off the top of your head on one of our stores last month, what did we sell and what did we make? So off the top of my head, um, the set that we were talking about before, I think it did maybe 120,000 in revenue and did about 20,000 in profit after ad spend. Okay. So not bad. Yeah. So I mean that, and that's one of our better margin stores. That is one of our better margin stores. Um, and you know, I, I still think that's even though it's less than 20%, that is still really good. Um, because I think people have an ideal mindset, like they can, you know, they can get some crazy return on their ad spend. And when we were, you know, when we were doing this in the beginning, I had the same idea. Like we would go to these conferences and people would talk about how, you know, you should bid lower on products. And, you know, I'm getting a little bit of ahead of myself here, but point being, um, now that I've been doing AdWords for several years, I like to spend more aggressively because it'll pr produce a more consistent result over time because you'll be getting more and more traffic. Right. Whereas, you know, our friend site, um, he did 40 K revenue last month and he did like $9,000 profit mm. after ad spend. So that's like 25%, mm. but he's not doing that every month. No, 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 inconsistent. So I would rather take, you know, 15% margin and just be able to right. scale it. Right. All right. So hope that helped guys. Uh, we're going to give you the thing that we like to do to make a lot of extra money every month. And you know, the thing with this is that it really scales like, like, like last year, you know, we did somewhere three to 4 million uh, in sales on our drop shipping stores, which means that when you get to that level, you have to buy a lot of inventory, like not, sorry, not inventory uh, products to, to ship to the customer. And if you use a cashback credit card, um, we actually have one from Capital One. It gives us 2% cash back. Um, you can just, at the end of the year, um, the more you sell, uh, the more you're gonna make. And it's it, it's crazy how, how quickly it adds up, guys. So, you know, if you haven't started your drop shipping store yet, and you know, you're thinking of starting to set, you know, starting to set things up, I would say once you get your first sale and you know that you can, you know, produce more, Go run out and get a cashback credit card and look look for two percent on on everything. Um, we're actually at the point now where we're, we've kind of split it up. We have the one that gets us two percent on our um, our invent. Not I keep saying inventory, but it's not inventory on the products. And then uh, we have one that gets us three percent on our ad spend. So you know we're doing uh, some crazy uh, some crazy cashback right now, and you know we're actually um, the three percent one. You know, it's a chase card. It can convert to travel points, something like that. My wife kind of handles it, but um, I mean, we're basically <laughs> we're traveling yeah. for free at this point. Two percent on four million is what? You're the math guy. Ten percent is four hundred thousand. Maybe eighty thousand dollars. I think so. Sounds that's, right. That's a lot of free money. Yeah. From cash back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it does help offset credit card fees. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a huge chunk at the end of the year. 
All right, um, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, be sure to check out our dropshipping playlist that I'm putting in the description box. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, it really helps us out. And we'll see you guys next time.